education does not belong in buildings, but you can learn from anywhere. Maud Chifamba is a 22-year-old Zimbabwean who is at the final stages of completing her accounting articles and chartered accountancy qualification. Prior to this, she made history when she completed her primary school education at the age of 10 and her secondary school education by the time she was 13. This enabled her to become the youngest student to commence her undergraduate studies at the University of Zimbabwe at the age of 14. Following her undergraduate degree, she subsequently obtained a Master of Science in Accounting, also from the University of Zimbabwe. She's an avid YouTuber and a link to her channel will be placed in the description box. How are you doing today? I'm alright, how are you and thank you for inviting me. No problem. Tell us, where are you from? So, I'm from around. <laughs> Um, I was born in Gokwe, um, which is like Midlands province, and then I was raised in a lot of places. From um, Gok I left Gokwe when I was like five, six, and then I lived at a place called uh, Handis Road, which is between Kweko and Gwere, close to Kodmira Prison. And um, then from there, my family then moved to Chegu to and I've been in Harare since I started my degree, which is like about eight years now. Is it eight? Yeah. So I'm from Harare now. <laughs> yeah. We all know you as the whiz kid, mm -hmm. but can you explain exactly how does one become the whiz kid? <laughs> so uh, I always say that um, I'm not only a whiz kid because I'm a lady now, so you can call me whiz lady. <laughs> But what happened is, um, so when I was, uh, as I've said, I left Goku when I was like five, when I was, was it five or six? Because I was in grade one, when I was six. So I was in grade one and then I uh, went to stay in uh, Hunters Road with my brother. So uh, when I got there, we were learning, I started school, I started going to Conmara Prison School. And it was really far away from home. It was too far. It was more than eight k from the place we called home. So, you know, at the, end, at the end of the day, like, we used to wake up before the sun is up for us to be able to beat screen time. This was before the children's rights. People don't get spanked at school. We used to get beat if you were late. So we got the... Um, I went there for, like, grade one and... After there were stories of people being kidnapped and stuff through the like the forest that we used to walk through when we we're coming from school. So what ended up happening is the villagers then said, "Let's turn a farmhouse into a school." So when this was done, the house was taken over by well some people, and then we're given where the part where the farmer used to keep his um, his his animals, his poultry. This was a poultry farmer. And uh, that was what was given to us as a classroom. So it was just three half rooms, I would say. So then grade one and two used to, to be in one class. Then grade three, four, five learned in another class. Then grade six and seven learned in one class. So what so happened was when I was now grade three, I was given a paper, second term, I was given a paper for grade four and it was a math paper and I'm naturally good with numbers. And um, this is before I could explain myself. I was just good at numbers. So then I uh, wrote that paper and I had 100% in that math paper, the grade four paper. So the next day I then asked the teachers for me to write exams with grade fives. Then I was number one, grade five. So the next year, instead of me going to grade four, I then went to grade six and then did grade seven. So that's how I then managed to be done with primary school by the time I was 10. Then, um, when I was about to go to secondary school, there was really no secondary school in the area, so I couldn't go to school um, 
I had to start on my own at home. So I started on myself on my own for two years and then I wrote my, my O level. So instead of four years, I did two years for secondary school and then I did my form five and six. So if you then do that, then you see that I then managed to finish my A level when I was 13. Yeah. When you're saying you studied on your own, mm -hmm. what exactly did that entail? Okay, so for for me, I was ten, and my in the community that I was, there was no secondary school, and the only option that was there. So what used to happen for for us is after grade seven, you either go if you're a guy, you go and look for gold. If you're a lady, that's the time you get married, because in this in this community. Children don't really have anything else to do and what is expected is for you to get married. And the thing is with my family, I come from a polygamous family and I never really had a, an inspiring example for marriage. So marriage was never something that was on the cards for me. I never wanted to get married. So I needed to do something else that is not just sitting at home and waiting for someone to see me and marry me. So I then took advantage of the books that were in the house. One of my half-brothers was once a teacher. He had passed on by the time I got to secondary school. He had passed on, but then I took, there was a Bible in the, in the home. There was Success and Commerce. There was Integrated Science Book 3. There was um, New General Mathematics Book 4. And so I did Commerce, Science, Religious Studies, Math, and English because everything was being started in English and that sort of then informed the subject that I was then starting on my own. So during the holidays when people would be back home and some of those who were fortunate enough to afford going into towns and um, going to school when they were back home then I would request for their notes because you know what a form one, form two, form three some people really don't care about school like that, so they didn't mind me having their books. So then I used that to study on my own, and then I just asked for exam fees. So essentially, you prepared, you did not attend a classroom no. for all of your high school? I only then started going to formal school when I was form five. Okay. Yeah. And what subjects did you study at A level? At A level, I did math, accounting, and business studies. Why did you choose those three subjects? So it's actually a funny story. Uh, when I was in, when we were staying in Hannes Road before we had then moved to, to Chiaguchu, my brother that I was staying with was a, was a vendor. So you would go and buy fish in uh, Binga and sold it and then come back, sold the fish and then come back and then we would sell them along the Blawayo, Harry Blawayo Highway. So he, if this would take him something like two weeks, probably at most, uh, to do the whole process and come back. So from coming from Anders Road, going to Bing and coming back, that would be like two weeks. So um, what he used to do is he would sit us down. We, 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 he was a vendor and we sometimes did a bit of farming for subsistence. So he would um, sit us down and say, you know what, I have this business idea. I want to go buy fish and we'll come and sell at this profit. But at the end of the day, we would still, still find ourselves washing seed that would have been given for us, like for us to probably farm by donors, for us to get a meal because we, we didn't have money. But at the same time, when my brother sat us down, he would make he would say, I make this and this much profit from this. So I really did not, could not reconcile how come you're making so much profit, you're going out every time to buy fish and come back and you're selfish, but we're still not finding enough to get meal and meal. So... I had then an interest in business. I wanted to find out how is it that something that looks so good on paper can't provide for us. And I became involved more like helping out in the selling of fish and stuff like that. But um, when I then was done with my O level and then was not going into a formal school, I went there and I said, I want to study, um, I want to study business studies. And then, that's the one thing that I knew I wanted to study and then combine business studies and my natural ability with numbers I then found myself doing accounting yeah 
So you mentioned that you were self-studying for the whole duration of your, well, most of your high school. Yeah, yeah. When you're saying self-studying, mm -hmm. what time would you wake up? What would your day-to-day -day routine look like? Uh, okay, so I wasn't staying with my parents, so you, I really didn't have um, a, a pass from doing household tasks mm -hmm. because in the rural areas as a girl, you're still expected to... To clean the house, you're still expected to find fire hose, you're still expected to go find water. So with that, that sort of then informed my study schedule because if you then look at it, you will be busy all day, you're still expected to go to the fields because if you don't do that, no, you won't eat, basically. So, and then into that, I wasn't staying with my parents. So what I, would, what I did was I would wake up a bit early. I remember from even the time when I was in primary, I would wake up at 3, at 3 a.m. to study. So that by the time everybody gets up and everybody is expected to go into the field, I would be done with a bit. I would have done a bit of studying. And then if I didn't find some time during the day, I could still do it because usually the day you starts with you going to find water or going to the fields and you then cooking for the family and then helping out um, and then by the time evening comes you're really tired so I couldn't really put in study time in the evenings so mornings were good for me because I would be fresh and then I wouldn't have I would be fresh nor tired and then I also didn't have anything that would be expected of me that early in the morning. You finished secondary school at 13, yeah, yeah. how did you then decide that you wanted to go to the University of Zimbabwe and study accounting? Okay, then, uh, so I, I have explained how I found myself in commercials doing business studies and accounting and math, uh, but when I was like um, really young uh, at home, there used to be this uh, magazine which had people that were smartly dressed and I don't have I had like one dress for church <laughs> and I was seeing those people in these two piece attires you know nice heels court shoes and stuff and I thought I wanted to be one of them and so that is how I then wanted to be a, a chartered accountant because I knew they dressed well. So then, now that I was now first with um, an opportunity of what degree was I going to do, it was actually, it's actually a funny story because at first when I actually applied at universities, they used to say I was too young and I would, me coming to that university would sort of put it in the spotlights and it would be too much responsibility for them because I was just starting to be a teenager. But... Um, when it was in the, then got into the media and then after that I was called to the university and they said you know what it used it I got a calls from other universities but use it is the one that I had actually applied to so they then called me and said you know what these are the degree programs that we have and uh, in the faculty of commerce this is the, these are the degrees that we have but also in, in the university these are the type of degrees that we have you have to choose the kind of degree that you want because by then the vice chancellor said to me you know what you're very young and you can start from scratch to learn a new field but in my mind i now wanted to be that person that i always <laughs> idolized and seen dressed well and doing what a chartered accountant did. So I now wanted to be a chartered accountant. So that is sort of how I then ended up, uh, because then I was then given a choice and then I chose accounting. What was the hardest thing about being a teenager whilst pursuing tertiary education? Being a teenager is hard <laughs> without pursuing <laughs> tertiary education. I know you can imagine being a teenager and uh, ex uh, and then pursuing uh, tertiary education. So for me, the most difficult thing was I was in this stage where I was trying to uh, discover who I am, coming on, coming onto myself, something like that. And uh, I was in this sport where everybody was looking at me because it was really like you could really pick it up that this is a kid. And also, I couldn't really relate to people. I felt like I was an island, uh, and I was surrounded by water and seas and stuff because. Uh, when it comes to my age math, they were, by the time I was in uni, they were probably studying their form twos, um, 
yeah, when I was now when I was in uni, they were form twos, and we couldn't really relate because I'm talking about college issues and they're talking about metrons if they're in boarding school or they're talking about whatever it is that they're talking about as teenagers. But at the same time, I couldn't really relate to the people that I was with at uni because 18, 19 years, you know what, you don't really know what you want, but you have sort of an idea of what it is that you want, who you are. I hadn't even had my period. <laughs> so I'm up with people who have sort of a bit of an identity and I'm trying to figure out that identity but I'm alone and I'm trying to discover that on my own. I think that was the hardest part of uh, being, I would say the hardest part of being in my for my first degree but then when I was not doing my masters I was still a teenager because uh, yeah I was still a teenager but then the difference between a 19 year old and a probably a 24, 25 year old is a bit understandable. You sort of can relate. It's different from a 14 year old and a 19 year old because you're in totally different phases of life and you really do not have things to talk about. So you'd see sometimes we'd be like walking from lectures and then people would be like, um, yeah, the Tabu Taura, Maud, please excuse yourself. <laughs> or guys or they'll be talking about something and someone will say guys guys or something like that so then it put me in sort of a, a position where I was in this certain class alone yeah I could relate to people but to a certain extent not fully tell me how did you fund your studies so for my studies, I was actually very fortunate and it's not, it's something that I'm actually very grateful for up to this day because for me, for me after I passed um, form for ordinary level, I, well, I tried to, to find scholarships, but when uh, the breakthrough was when this article was was written when I was like 12 doing form 5 and then it was like girl 12 leaves town spellbound and then I got a scholarship for my form 5 and form 6 and then after form 6 uh, the company that had sponsored me for form Six, six sort of bailed but then after the newspaper articles the university had then said you know what we're offering you this place and we in case nobody comes on board to sponsor you we'll give you full board and um, waiver your fees but then uh, Zimmer then came through and then they paid for my tuition and my residency for the war degree Tell me, is there anything specific uh, that your polygamous background influenced in terms of your education? I would say if there is um, something that my polygamous uh, background did, it would be to tell me that I was going to be my own savior. And uh, that, um, so growing that up in this situation, I had brothers that were old, uh, old enough to be my fathers, and like the one that I ended up going to stay with. Um, but you would see that their lifestyle was almost the same as the lifestyle that my father had provided for us because they hadn't gone to school and um, they really didn't have anything else other than probably just. Um, the land, it felt the usual that they had grown up in. So for me, that was sort of an indicator of if I don't study and if I don't get myself out of this situation, this is how I was going to end up in. And also that I didn't want the life that my mother was living. I didn't want to be, as I said before, a wife. That was way out of range for me. I never wanted that because of the example that I had then so it sort of then pushed me even when things were hard when I didn't have um, fees and had to start on my own it sort of solidified the fact that education was going to be my only way out of that situation that would be the influence that I say had on me so tell me we're sitting talking to you today mm -hmm. why do we not have any other Malchi farmers from Hunter's Road what do you think is the hardest thing to becoming someone like you? I, th I think it's, um, it's, it's, I think it's twofold. First, it's, 
is very hard to it is the first thing I would say is it is sort of too much to expect for someone to for you to expect that so sometimes so for me in Handel's Road there, there was definitely no school so I was studying on my own but sometimes there is a school but it's like eight kilometers away like Konmara was for me uh, when I was in grade one and you see what then happens is more um, gets their schooling and the moment they're done with school they are now here in Harare and they're talking to the people in Harare and the people back there do not really see what what really has more done what has changed with her life so there's really no motivation for you to walk 16 k's every day and endure having like no textbooks no book no no not enough stationery for you to there is really no motivation because there's really no example of this is a person that actually enjoyed this and this is what they have become there is not that much of um of the motivation and then it also comes into the vision you can only dream of things that we know so for those people in rural areas the thing that they know is this one made so much money from going to for gold from gold panning or this one got married to this person and then they did that they did that so this is the inspiration that they have this is the they, these are the real life examples that they have that they can see so this is what they know so it's very hard for them to then start um, imagining to say I can also be a Condoleezza Rice if I want to I can also be a chartered accountant if I want to there isn't I was fortunate enough that before my father passed away he passed away when I was like five he would take me outside and you know when we we're brushing our teeth he was like he was a soldier but I, I think he was enlightened so I had that sort of an example he just couldn't take a call of us because there was just so many of us <laughs> But he had a bit of an education. So when, when, when he would be brushing out it, he would be telling me, do you see that plane flying one day that can be you if you go to school? So even after he passed away, I had that because someone had seen the vision for me and I believed this was someone I could trust, someone I could believe. So if someone had seen this vision for me that I could be a pilot, that I could be Condoleezza Rice, even though I didn't know who Condoleezza Rice was, I had I had that dream because somebody saw it for me and communicated it to me. Now with other people, are they they do not have that example. They do not have um, that sort of motivation. So there's really is there really is no point for him to go eight eight kilometers every day when all they know is someone who didn't pass form four. So why should I go through that? What is the one misconception that you think urban Zimbabweans have of rural Zimbabweans? Um, I think that they do not have talent because uh, urban people are exposed and they are celebrated. So you would think that people in the rural areas, um, they do not have, they're not as talented as they are because what then looks in rural areas is that they are not nurtured. These talents are not nurtured like, um, I would take an example and say if someone plays soccer is good with football and in the rural areas it would be okay fine they just play football and that's the end of it but if they're like in urban areas they have access to scouts they have access to uh, they can be playing in the national teams and everything like that so I do think urban people because they're exposed they then tend to sort of group rural people as I would say, I wouldn't want to say losers, but I would want to say people that are not talented. Say that it's something that is um, surprising that, oh, she did that from a rural area. You know, you would expect probably for someone to go to get to university at 14 because they have home school and they have teachers, private tutors. But it would be surprising to an urban person to say this person with nothing because the conception is they do not have talent. But they do have talent, just that it's not nurtured and it's not harnessed to go into the places that then it will be clear to the world that they are talented. Do you have any advice for parents or students who are having to homeschool or be homeschooled due to the COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, I would say uh, I'm 
because I was homeschooled. Homeschooling actually works. Um, it, um, you just need a few tips and tricks to it. And um, you, 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 you know, the, um, there's one thing that my brother once told me uh, when I was in grade, I think in grade seven. So when we were in grade, when I was in grade seven, it was me and my other cousins. And one of my cousins, her father was a lecturer and she was learning at a very good school. And one of my other cousins had remained in Gokwe where I was born. That's where she's. That's where she lived, and they had a sort of a decent school. And then there was me in Andes Road, and our school was so it was like a new new school where we were learning in places where this person used to keep his poultry, and we didn't have desks. We had just benches, and we had to kneel down so that at least the book goes on the bench. So we would be writing while kneeling down. And then my brother said to me, so we were sort of in grade seven the same time. And my cousin from the fancy school had um, five units, and I had four units, and the other cousin had twenty something from Gokwe. And my brother sent me down and said, "Do you? Can you tell? Can you? What can you take from this whole situation?" And I had, I was just like, "Oh, okay." I passed, and <laughs> I had the, I, I had the best results, and. Then he said to me, um, education is not in buildings. He does not respect buildings because you can learn from everywhere. And that is also why I then had this figure to say, okay, I can actually start on my own because I had been told that education is not in buildings. So when it comes to homeschooling, you did uh, a few tricks, like try studying in the morning, try active studying, try um, uh, concentrating and taking off all the distractions, you know, having a, like a vision board, what is it that you seek to achieve, knocking off uh, a to-do list of, I have done this, I've done that. But otherwise, homeschooling can be done and it works because education does not belong in buildings, but you can learn from anywhere. Thank you very much for coming to us and sharing your story. We wish You're you very welcome. You're very welcome. Thank you.